Thanks, Jeremy. Um, next up, we're going to have a series of updates from the PM Working Group, um, which is a community. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, which is a community. Um, it's not community, partially community run. Y'all run it. Um, we're all the projects, product managers, um, and we collaborate on things like releases, critical user journeys, um, roadmaps, and key milestones in the project. Um, so I'm really, really excited to invite up um, some of our community members who help like pioneer this effort with us. Um, Carmine Remy, Josh Bonham, and David Aronchik, who you probably recognize from earlier on in the project. Anyway, uh, David will kick it off for us and did you hear what you guys have to say? Hey everyone. Um, I'm super lucky because I get the absolute easiest job. I don't have to highlight any of my work. I just get to highlight um, all the stuff that uh, all you have, have been doing. Um, as Taya said, we're gonna talk a little bit about what we've done over the past couple years, building our ecosystem. Uh, we'll talk about some of the user research we've done, um, and uh, I, I couldn't be more excited uh, to have this much user research early on, and then what we're going to be doing around collecting user input going forward and our overall release schedule. So, um, as Taya said, that's me, um, what, uh, 14 months ago or something like that, uh, staying on stage at KubeCon at, in uh, Austin uh, with Vish. Is Vish here? Vish. Vish and then Jeremy was in the audience, uh, the three co-founders of uh, Q1. What's that? He's on there? Hi, Vish. Um, and, and at the time, we said, wow, boy, machine learning is hard. You know, there's this problem. First, setting up a uh, ML pipeline, stack and pipeline is hard. Uh, setting up a production-ready one is even harder. Uh, and in particular, setting up one that ports between all the various multi-cloud solutions um, uh, is even harder than that. Um, and uh, I like to say this uh, very, very often uh, for, for uh, purposes of today, local, your laptop is a, a specific type of multi-cloud. So last year I got up and I presented that slide and um, uh, I presented the same problem. And uh, you know, I, are we done? Like it's 14 months, what's taking us so long, right? Um, the reality is it's a really hard problem and we took it on and, and, uh, I couldn't be more excited with where we go. Um, it's funny cause at, in the 2017, I, I said that this was our mission. And, uh, then in 2018, I said that this was our mission. And then now here in 2019, I'm still saying that this is our mission because it's still our mission because it's this big and it's this hard and probably in 2020, I'll be up here and I'll do some inception style, like presentation of me doing this one again. Um, but it's true, and, and I think that's a really good message. That's, that means that we're kind of on the right track here. A, a North Star, a mission, is not one that you can finish in a sprint or multiple sprints or a year or multiple years. This is something that we want to get done forever. And um, it's only through the work of the people in this room and on the call and, and the countless ones who add to the GitHub repo that, that we don't even see um, who are making this happen. And the summary is exactly what Jeremy said. And, and you know, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, uh, Kubeflow is designed to be loosely coupled. It's designed to be uh, microservice oriented. It's designed to be cloud native um, and not just single cloud, multi-cloud. And we want to provide a platform that provides composable, portable and scalable ML pipelines and really base that on Kubernetes. We're not, we're gonna be opinionated in almost no cases except for that. We are really are anchoring on Kubernetes because we feel like that is the best, easiest to use platform for this loosely coupled microservice oriented architecture. Uh, and you've seen me present this slide as well, but this, the, the reason that we did it with Kubernetes is what you see here. It provides all these like components under the stack. And then we're able to take that pipeline that Jeremy showed earlier and lay it out in all these various locations, each of which taking its specifics from where it was deployed. Now, you saw me present the same mission over and over again, but I, I cannot overstate how much stuff has been done. In 2017, because um, I'm a PM, I get to talk very big, but in fact, this is all we launched with, right? It was three things. There was a Jupyter notebook that was barely there. Uh, it was a TF job, which thanks to Jeremy's incredible hard work over a period of months and years was already being used in production quite a lot. 
uh, forked out of the TF repo. Uh, and then we had uh, uh, Selden was one of the first people to, to contribute to the, the project. And we had a sample uh, in 2017 uh, serving with that and TF serving. Uh, in 2019, there is a lot more. Uh, and again, this is stuff from TFX. This is from Google. This is from Jupyter and Pachyderm and Selden and Catib and NTT and Istio. All these various folks have been able to pull together a critical user journey here. And, and you can see here, you can walk through almost every one of those boxes in the pipeline today as it stands today. And, and, and again, I cannot stress again enough, it is the people in this room, it is the people who deeply care about the experience of the um, end user community. Oop, missed one. Uh, missed possibly the most important one, which is Kubeflow pipelines, which orchestrates them all together. Uh, this is an amazing graph. This is absolutely amazing. This is 4,000 almost, it's like 3,900 blah, blah, blah commits uh, across all the repos. By the way, who um, vendored in uh, Homebrew? You're screwing up all my stats. Like I have to go in and manually remove Homebrew from all our commits. What? Terrible. Um, anyhow, so, but this is it. This, these are commits to the Kubeflow repo. It's amazing, right? It's fantastic. 4,000 commits, 200 contri uh, community contributors, uh, 50 different companies contributing. I hope I didn't miss one of your logos here. If I did, mail me. Um, really, this is amazing. And this is just 14 months. Nobody even has a commercial offering yet. Nobody is like, no cloud has said, oh, you know, we're going to have the, the hosted push button, you know, thing. This is just a community coming together to do it. And that's amazing. Uh, I want to highlight just a few of them. Oh, actually, let me say this. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, because I, I led Kubernetes for several years, um, how this compares to Kubernetes. And uh, this is what the community for Kubernetes looks like. Um, uh, you know, this is a recent poll. And just to highlight, you know, that's Google, the big uh, thing there, and uh, the other orange one is not Google. For Kubeflow, this is what it looks like. And that's pretty good, right? This is not a single company effort. This is all of us coming together to build something that we all know that we need. Uh, I do want to highlight some of those. Um, uh, you know, Catib, obviously hyperparameter sweep is one of the biggest challenges, one of the first things that people do. Uh, wonderful tooling, and there's a rich, service on top of it with study job, a rich object, I should say. Um, we have TensorRT from NVIDIA that I mentioned there for GPU-based serving. Uh, Argo, which is the engine that, that powers uh, Kubeflow pipelines. Um, and Aricto, who's done a, a number of different things across the uh, board, uh, helping with our storage, helping with the notebook experience. Um, and then uh, at, the, uh, at scale, just last week, they talked about uh, Mini-KF. But... We need help. And I presented that slide this last year, so I feel like I got to do some work to, in order to like, you know, earn my keep. Uh, we still do need help. And the question is, well, where? What do you need to do? And that is where I would like to hand it off to Josh uh, to walk through some of the user research. Hi, I'm Josh Bottom. Uh, probably have connected with a lot of you guys. I, I work as a, uh, a product manager uh, in the Kubeflow community. One of the things I wanted to ask folks here, this was from our Kubeflow user survey. First one we did, we we're trying to get data to make some decisions from. How many people in this room believe that they will have more data scientists using Kubeflow than machine learning a platform engineers or, or data engineers? So how many think that they'll, in their organization, the data scientists will be the, the, the large bulk of the users? How many think it would be the machine learning platform engineers? So more machine learning platform engineers, interesting. Anybody, any other title that would be, anybody want to shout out a title that might be? All right, so that's an interesting data point uh, to help us drive because we believe as Carmine put in his document about personas, it's important to understand who you're speaking to as you drive your roadmap and what type of feedback you're getting so you can you can kind of make judgments about whether you're going in the right direction here's kind of interesting too in the organizational types right that there were a lot of enterprise people that gave us feedback in our in our first survey and then where do you run these workloads again if i could ask a question do you run your workloads to the majority how many people run their workloads on prem so a pretty good amount. How many use a public cloud? 
So about the same amount. So the survey was, uh, was a little bit different, but you can see the results here. And then what are the major pain points? This obviously gets to the point what we're really trying to, to get feedback to and you know, setting up the infrastructure, the data cleaning, uh, taking models to production. So, I mean, I don't know if folks have difference of opinion that what the survey came back with, but I think these are interesting data points that we're using as we look. And then what improvements that you would like, right? Simplified end-to-end -end workflows, right? Which I think if you look at the things that Jeremy had talked about, really come in better documentation. Oof, everybody loves to do documentation, right? But uh, simplified installation. And I think we've seen some recent deliveries around some of these things, but we need help in people giving us more and more feedback. So the roadmap directions right now is simplify first use through you know, the landing page and the dashboard, uh, simplified end-to-end -end, uh, workflow, so simplified in everything, uh, you know, with integrated build, train, and deploy, right? Enterprise readiness, uh, authentication, isolation, multi-user. So this is one place where I think folks are, are really talking about in the enterprise space in particular on-prem or, or elsewhere. How many people here think that, you know, this, Authentication, isolation, these type of things are important to what they need to be able to do in, in their environments. So pretty good, uh, pretty, pretty good set. Anybody else want to shout out anything they feel passionate about? If you had top three things, anybody have a, an opinion of something that's like really top of mind? Can't keep, can't keep it from coming out. Uh, so collecting user input. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, uh, but the goals were, were that we wanted to find a, a standardized way to collect input from folks. Again, trying to find the right personas, whether we use consistent input. We didn't want to get caught up with just talking to the same people all the time. Uh, and also to make it easy for the, the end users to provide feedback, but also for, for the community people to create it. We have a process defined. And as we go towards potentially 1.0, uh, we expect that this data collection may be a little bit more rigorous as we get to 1.0. But in a format perspective, our idea is that we're asking the community to, uh, to realize that we'll probably come out with approximately three big topics that we want to get release information on or feedback on through the CUJ process. We'll probably do that about the third week of the, the, of the delivery cycle. And we'll have the Kubeflow engineering team come up with some one or two questions that they want to ask you and also what type of personas that we have. And then those deliveries basically are going to come through one-on-ones with people as well as in group efforts. And we're not asking for a lot of time, but we do want folks who are using the tools to be able to give us information in a 20 to 30 minute to answer a couple of questions so we make good decisions. So you know, the outreach PMs like myself and Taya and others are going to come to folks and say, hey, would you like to participate in some of these CUJs? And, and we'd really like the, the folks to do that. And then we'd post those results. On an outreach, here's another thing that I think is important. How many people are, are not from the Bay Area here? So I'm from Dallas. Uh, we were in LA last week. We did Kubeflow Day LA. If I looked at the analysis of, both LinkedIn and uh, Indeed, you know, LA is the second largest city in the country. But if I look at both LinkedIn and, and, and Indeed about jobs posted for machine learning, uh, as well as people that have TensorFlow or Kubernetes in their, LA second largest city was like ranked number six, right behind Seattle. Um, and so I, I personally took a mission there because I've been doing a lot of calls in LA and I saw a lot of interest to bring people together. We brought some of the best folks, all the best folks in the community, I think, down there to talk to them. We, what I really enjoyed about that session was that after the breaks, people grouped up and it wasn't vendor. I mean, we were led by vendor because they didn't have a lot of end users. And really what we wanted to do is get that end user stuff going, right? But the communities were starting to come together and build their own discussions, right? peer-to-peer -peer Riot Games and DreamWorks or whomever, right, Snap. Um, and so that really made it exciting to me to see that type of, of, of benefit, I think. And 
any way that we can build that in other markets, especially with end users taking the lead a little bit to say what they're doing, people get excited. That's pretty much our process to get going. Uh, next, uh, on to Carmine, who's been doing a great job on the release cycle and organizing it after 4.0.4. Thank you. Um, won't spend too much time here. This, some of you guys might be allergic. This is going to be processes and formalization and maturation and all those kind of good things. Closer. Thank you. Should I talk slow? Golf voice, maybe? All right. Um, so one area where you guys can contribute uh, is uh, the critical user journeys. So here I've provided some links. You guys will get a copy of this uh, later. And you can see some of our existing formalized CUJs. Um, there's a link down at the bottom if you're new to CUJs. What does that look like? If you're an old timer like me and you're used to UML, it's sort of like a use case description and secrets diagrams and things like that without the diagrams. Um, but in any case, um, here's some CUJs. Uh, we'll be doing more of these over time. And uh, it's generally speaking good to start with one of the target personas. So there's quite a few up there. There's probably about nine. And each one of those will be touched at some point in the Kubeflow um, experience and journey for most organizations. Everything from a manager of these different types of uh, disciplines to the infrastructure engineer, which typically might be the first person that needs to install uh, this application stack and support the application stack for the data scientists and machine learning engineers. Um, this is sort of a stab at formalizing the process uh, for a CUJ. So as you can see, there's uh, several steps here, about uh, six in total. I've put on there at the, the final bit. So after you identify something you want to write about, and certainly if you're passionate about these things, some of our best CUJs are written by those that are passionate about a very specific gap in Kubeflow today. So as you're using it yourself or you're hacking on it and you find those gaps and you say, wow, this is you know, a big area that I'd like to contribute, I uh, definitely encourage you to do that. Um, but this is the rough process, identify it, draft it, uh, circulate it amongst the community. And somewhere in there, that's sort of a regex there at the end, try and get some feedback from your target uh, user, your target persona. Uh, ideally, either during, before, after, at some point, just get that feedback to know that's sort of somewhat grounded. You might be the domain expert, in which case, you know, you can take some liberties, but I definitely encourage you to do that. Some of our CUJs do have a label, plus issues. And so uh, on the previous slide, I, I included a link to some of those that you might be able to see. Um, but the creation of a label so that you can then aggregate all of the issues in GitHub is a great way to kind of complete the loop and sort of say, here's the CUJ. Here are all the different issues or stories or epics that I see coming out of this that I'd like the community to work on. Are you plan on working on yourself? Um, and then that becomes part of the, of the roadmap. And finally, go back to your CUJ and put those links into the document so that when somebody's coming you know, down the road a month, two, three months, and they read your CUJ, they get excited about it, that they can tie that to the work that's actually happened in, in GitHub and in the community. So that's just a, a preliminary CUJ process as we, as we mature that. And then I thought I would go over the release cycle a little bit. Um, I didn't anticipate this to do it like this, but in phase zero, um, you know, ideally we'll pick themes, we'll pick some CUJs. Uh, there's going to be some technical debt and so, or, and or refactoring that we want to do. And with that, uh, you know, we did a, we wrote a document on work streams and work streams within Kubeflow, uh, working groups and having coordinators and some of the responsibilities of those coordinators. If you would like to lead a particular working group, you know, certainly put your hand up and, and nominate yourself to do, uh, that activity. Um, Definitely encourage it. So that's kind of phase zero uh, for a release. We'll tighten that up in terms of you know timings within a release, when that, what that looks like. Then in phase one, uh, scope, resources, and quality. At the moment, right now, we, we identify a lot of issues that we'd like to see be accomplished and delivered in a release. And it's uh, mostly a sort of a best case effort to get there. Um, ideally, if, uh, if it was possible to tighten that up a bit and do some standard you know project time management stuff around scope, resources, uh, and quality, and I'll get that to that in the next slides. How am I doing a time? Actually, I've got one minute. I'm going to go through this real fast. Uh, all right, phase two, uh, execution and tracking and releasing. Um, so a little bit about integrating. Actually, I'm going to skip over this slide. And finally, just go to this one. This will be my last slide. And uh, when you think about, I mentioned CUJs, I mentioned the release cycle. Um, and you guys are probably familiar with that saying, done, done. 
Um, there's quite a few things there. So when I've actually gone over through CUJs and integrations, I'll pick, keep picking on model DB and I, I see how model DB has been integrated. There's a lot of these things here that are actually lacking. And so uh, in the fullness of time, seeing that something is part of the CI process for building Kubeflow, the fact that you can deploy it, the fact that there's a lifecycle aspect to it to, you know, in the future, there's the next release and we want to actually update or upgrade this particular component, add it to a pipeline, do the docs, do certification, add code, add examples. Um, that would be sort of my best um, view on adding components and or doing CUJs. And that's all I've got time for. Thank you.